but he said he would be faithful, right? I, I've been saying more and more often, I hear myself saying that the best things in life are difficult. How many have found that to be true? Say amen. amen. Some of you have found that to be true. Some of you have not discovered that yet, uh, but you will. Uh, just keep living. All right. And uh, you'll find out that that is indeed true. Well, I am sharing this evening what I shared uh, to our uh, students on Wednesday morning. It's always a, a privilege to speak uh, on Wednesdays in chapel. Thank you. Uh, this is because I do not think I will be able to stand still. And so uh, just in case I decide to, to move, who wore this last? <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. If it falls off in the middle, it's all right. I'll just come back to where I'm supposed to stand. All right, good. So I'm sharing what I shared on Wednesday morning. And so while I told the students, I said, as soon as, as, soon as you can answer these four questions correctly, uh, you can go. Uh, we're, we're done. I'm done preaching. All right. So how many want me to give you the four questions right off, right off the bat? All right. Okay, some of you do, okay? Because some of you think you can remember, remember them, don't you? Yes, I know, I know. Uh, turn with me, if you will, to uh, the book of Proverbs, and we're going to begin in Proverbs chapter 3, which happens to be the scripture that our children are memorizing. Now, one of the things that we have done, we changed this probably three years ago, I believe. Uh, Mr. Coleman was still here, and uh, the staff talked about uh, all of the scripture, a great number of verses that our students have memorized over the years. And uh, those of you that, that may not know how FCA operates, we, the students are, are required to say a weekly scripture. Usually two, three, four verses, something like that. And they have to say it. It's cumulative. So over a, a four-week or a five-week period, <clears throat> they're adding scriptures each week. And Proverbs 3 is the, is the first passage that they, they uh, memorize. And uh, as we, a few years ago, it was, it became clear to us that uh, as we were changing scriptures every year, uh, our students were not really retaining the scriptures they had memorized. Uh, how many understand that when you uh, are required to do something and you get a sticker for it, uh, you'll do the minimum, right? <clears throat> you'll just get by, get it said, and then get your sticker and move on. All right, that's how it works. So we, we changed it up and we decided let's choose the 10, 12, 14 uh, passages that uh, we really would like for all of our graduates to just, just have it right here. Uh, have it in their head so when they graduate, they ought to be able to recite Isaiah 53. All right, whole passage. They ought, they ought to know Psalm 23. And then you go down to uh, the county uh, museum. Have you ever been down there to the court, uh, to the uh, Old Stony, and they have a museum up there, the second floor, and they set you in chairs, and they, they treat it like you were uh, a student back in the day, whenever that was. Some of you probably remember this, just kidding, uh, back in the 19th century. And uh, you sit there, and they, they say, well, what would you learn in school if you were in school in the 1800s? And you sit there, and you say, well, I, I don't know. They'll say, well, you would learn, if you're in public school now, they'd say, you would learn Psalm 23. Anybody remember that? Did anyone here learn Psalm 23 in public school? You did? You must be old. All right. Only one person. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. So 20, 20th century. Okay. Uh, they would say um, you Ten Commandments. You got you to you know the Ten Commandments. Every child across, across the board. You got to know the Ten Commandments. Well, that's not so anymore. You understand that. So we, we thought, uh, let's, let's, let's do this then. Let's just keep the same scriptures year after year after year. So after 13 years, kindergarten and, tw and 12 grades, after 13 years of memorizing the same scriptures, they ought to have it up here pretty well. So that's what we do. And then each year we, we add some bonus scriptures on top of that that they can say and continue to expand uh, because uh, it takes them not near as long to memorize scripture as it does me. Uh, they can rattle it off pretty fast. So we're, we were looking at Psalm uh, 
three. Now, that's not my message, so I will uh, start my uh, timer now, okay? <clears throat> that was pre-sermon. This is sermon. Proverbs 3. I want to read uh, verses 13 through 16, and I want us to ask four questions about biblical wisdom. And the first question that uh, I'm going to ask is this. Why should I, I'll personalize this, why should I seek wisdom? Now, I pray for wisdom every day. Why should I seek wisdom? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 16. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain of her is better than the gain of silver and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Now, every single one of us would love to see our bank account going up, not down, right? We would love to see the, the finances of the church increasing. Wow, what could we do if our, if our uh, uh, offerings just drastically increased? What would we be able to do with our facilities? And we can dream and we can wish, oh, if we only had this, if we had the rich young ruler come to church. That's what Pastor Joey was talking about this morning. Uh, think about it. Uh, yeah, he was... He, 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 uh, he was anxious. He had an urgency. He come running to, to Christ. He humbled himself. So he at least had the appearance of humbling. It ended up he wasn't so humble. But he had the appearance of being humble. He was wealthy. And he kept all the rules. I mean, that, what are the requirements for membership? Uh, let's just say there's four, all right? Let's, just, let's make him a member, right? And Jesus said no. Uh, awesome passage. Awesome sermon this morning. So why should I seek Wisdom. Now, I don't know, maybe some of you are collectors of silver and gold or something else uh, you've invested in, in this. I, my my father-in-law loves to collect uh, silver coins and, and he'll go to wherever, yard sales or wherever you find those things, uh, flea markets, and uh, he'll, he'll find these old coins. He knows how to spot them. You know, he, he has the eye for it. He's collected them for years. In fact, multiple generations. I don't have an eye for it, but... Uh, I wish I did. Uh, you know, silver, an ounce of silver, uh, the price, I, I just, I looked it up to make sure it was, I was accurate. I think today uh, the price was $16.92 an ounce. $16.92 an ounce. I have no idea how much an ounce is. Uh, but that's what it is. All right. It sounds good to me. Uh, but gold is at, uh, is almost $1,300 an ounce. How many would rather have gold than silver? All right. That's, a, that's quite a difference. Uh, it talks about rubies. It talks about other jewels. It talks about, oh, go over to, go over to Proverbs chapter 8. Go, to, go with me to Proverbs chapter 8 because we're asking the question, why should I seek wisdom? And I'm going to give you the answer to that in just a moment. And as soon as you can give the answer to all four questions, you can go. Uh, Galatians, or Proverbs, oh, Galatians, you don't want me going back to Galatians, do you? Uh, Proverbs chapter 8. I love Galatians. Proverbs chapter 8. Verses 10 11, it says here, take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels and all that you may desire cannot be compared to, with her. So are you ready for the answer? Here's the answer. The answer to the question, why should I seek wisdom is this. Because wisdom, how many students we have here? Raise your hand. All right. All right. So if you know it, you can say it with me. Because wisdom is more valuable than any earthly treasure. Did you hear that? Say it. Say it one more time for them, students, so they get it. Because wisdom is more valuable than any earthly treasure. So let's try that together tonight. Question is, why should we seek wisdom? Why should I seek wisdom? The answer is because, because wisdom is more than any, all right, we'll do it a couple more times. Uh, you got to learn all those words because, uh, so why do we seek wisdom? Because wisdom is more than, all right, you're getting it. You're getting it. You have to remember that to leave tonight, all right? How many are going to do best to, to remember that? <laughs> all right. 
Because wisdom is more valuable than any earthly treasure. Where does wisdom come from? Go to Proverbs chapter 2. The answer is simply in verse 6. Where do we find wisdom? Where, where's, how do we get wisdom? Where does wisdom come from? And the answer is Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The Lord gives wisdom. I, I, cannot, I, I can get five more degrees if I want to. No, I can't, really. I, I couldn't handle it. I could try. And would that make me wise? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No amount of education. FCA, as great of an education as we give, FCA, if we just went through and did English and some math and some science here and some history there and some spelling, made sure they, correct, they use good grammar and all of that, would, would, they, would our students, would they be gaining wisdom? Just from us? No. The Lord gives wisdom. Now, thankfully, God has placed in our uh, school uh, some, some good wisdom givers. Uh, through, through our staff, God, and God gives wisdom. Notice this. God gives wisdom. Where does that wisdom come from? From his mouth, from his words, or from his word comes wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So the question is, from where does wisdom come? And the answer is, the Lord gives wisdom. Can you say that with me? Where does wisdom come from? The Lord gives wisdom. Now, why should we seek to be wise? Because wisdom is more All right, some of you aren't convinced yet, but it is. The scripture says, more than gold, more than silver, more than rubies, more than, more than anything else, it's more valuable. Wisdom is more valuable than anything else we could have. I think that's why Jesus said what he said to this rich young man. He, he got right down to, to where it cut. He got right down to where it hurt because at the end of the day, while this man was... Had maybe had even the appearance of humility, bowing on the ground before, his, before the master. And he kept the laws. There was something that was still too precious to him. Right? There was something that was still too precious to him. He wasn't ready to release it. But we seek wisdom because wisdom is more valuable than any earthly treasure. From where does wisdom come? The Lord gives wisdom. Amen. The third question is, how do I become wise? How do we become wise then? And there are a couple of verses here in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Knowledge and wisdom are synonymous in the book of Proverbs and in many places in Scripture because this almost identical verse appears in chapter 9 and verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy or the holy one is insight or understanding. So how do I become wise? The answer is by learning the fear of the Lord. By learning the fear of the Lord. Now, it takes a little while for someone who is new and unoriented to scripture, especially to the wisdom literature, as to what in the world does the fear of the Lord mean, right? Right? Has anyone ever stumbled over that? You've struggled with that? What's it mean? That the word fear in our language conjures up a lot of different reactions, right? Uh, it's, uh, most of us do not like to be afraid. We, don't, we, we go out of our way to avoid something scary, something fearful. We take measures. We buy insurance to help us not be, uh, to cope with our fear, right? You can buy insurance for almost any fear that you have. And it may cost you a lot. You may have to have a lot of gold and silver to, to get some of it. But uh, we, we, that, that's not an idea that is really something that we quickly embrace. So what is the fear of the Lord? Uh, we become wise. Or how do we become wise? We become wise by learning the fear of the Lord. So let's rehearse here. We have three questions before us. Let's see if you can answer them. Why should I seek wisdom? Because wisdom is... All right, pretty good, pretty good, all right. So, 
if wisdom is more valuable than any earthly treasure, how do you get wisdom? Where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from? Yes, they, all right. The Lord gives wisdom, the scripture says. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The Lord gives wisdom. And so how do we become wise? We become wise by learning, by learning the fear of the Lord. By learning the fear of the Lord. Uh, the fear of the Lord, we're going to define that here in just a moment. Let me say it this way, though. To, while the fear is a, is a word that we try to avoid, it's, it's an experience we try to avoid, uh, the fear of the Lord is, is simply knowing God. It's knowing God. Uh, that's that's what, how it's used in, in Proverbs. It means to know God. But let me give you a, a more specific answer to that, and that's our fourth question. What is the fear of the Lord? And our answer to this is also the same answer to the question, what is wisdom? Because the fear of the Lord is wisdom. So what, what is the fear of the Lord? We become wise by learning the fear of the Lord. So what is the fear of the Lord? And whatever our definition of the fear of the Lord is, is what it means to be wise or to be gaining wisdom. And so let's go to Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. There are several places we go, but we'll just look at this one tonight. And it says this, the fear of the Lord, Proverbs 8 verse 13, says the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Perverted speech I hate. He said, pride, arrogance, and the way of evil, and perverted speech, I hate. There are other places in Scripture, in, in the Proverbs as well, where he, he talks about that. But we're going to take this principle here. What is the fear of the Lord, and therefore what is wisdom? The answer is, uh, students, can you remember the answer? What's, what is the fear of the Lord? To what? All right, Cody said it. Cody, say it real loud. To love what God loves and to hate what God hates. That's the fear of the Lord. That's wisdom. To love what God loves and to hate what God hates. Now, where do you go to find out what God loves or what God hates? Where do you go? Where do you turn? Remember, where does, from where does wisdom come? The Lord gives wisdom. I kind of messed you up because I didn't go down through the order, right? That was the second question. Where does wisdom come from? The Lord gives wisdom, right? And it says his mouth, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And so how do we know what God loves? How do we know what God hates? Because he tells us quite plainly, in fact, in his word. I was reading uh, through, uh, let's see, what was it? It was uh, Exodus chapter 21, uh, I believe it was, I think it's in Exodus chapter one, uh, 21, 22, it kind of goes over those chapters, about capital sins, sins that, were punish, that are punishable by death. Uh, and how many would realize that if we lived in a culture that, sa that said something like, um, well, let me just turn over there, I have it right here, uh, something that... Uh, let me read one. Whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. Now, how many, would under, how many understand that if we lived in a culture that said whoever strikes his father or his mother shall be put to death. Or whoever steals a man, kidnapping, and sells him, slave trade, or anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death. Uh, and it goes on. Uh, Whoever strikes a man so that he dies should be put to death. All right, eye for an eye, too. It goes on. That's in this passage. Uh, and it keeps going over into chapter uh, uh, 22. It has some more. How many understand that if we lived in that culture, we would want to be very, uh, we, would, we would make sure that we knew exactly what it meant to curse your mother or father. All right? We didn't make sure. Now, now tell me again. Let me make sure I got this. All right? Now, now this, this is what's not permitted, right? So, how important is it for us to understand what God, to, what God loves and what God hates? So, what is the fear of the Lord? Wisdom is to love what God loves and to... Right. So, why should I seek wisdom? Because wisdom... 
Some of you want to stay here. That's great. All right, I have more. I have more. You want me to keep going in my notes? Why should I seek wisdom? Because wisdom is... From where does wisdom come? The Lord. How do I become wise? By learning the fear of the Lord. And what is this fear of the Lord? Or what is wisdom? Wisdom is to love... Amen. How many think you have that? Now, uh, Wednesday, I think we had four students who came, uh, came up front and they answered the questions to uh, answer those questions perfectly. I gave them all a dollar. Well, I'm not, I don't have any dollars with me tonight. I don't. But if you come back a year from now, I know, I see, yeah, immediately, immediately, as soon as I say that, as people start right now, I better make sure I wrote this down now. You don't even know what I'm going to say. I will give you a gumball. <laughs> you're, you, I know what you're thinking, you are hoping for some gold or some silver. And can, can I remind you that wisdom is more valuable than any earthly treasure. Absolutely. And so let's seek to be wise because wisdom is loving what God loves and hating what God hates. Amen. Stand with me tonight. Heavenly Father, we ask you for wisdom. We ask that you would uh, show us in your word the wisdom that we need for this week. Because we don't have enough. We don't understand enough. But Lord, we do understand enough that we can come to you because you are the one who gives wisdom. And from your mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Oh God, teach us to hate what you hate, to love what you love, to seek you more than any earthly treasure, and to allow you to work in our lives and to uh, live through us, we pray. Be with us as we go from this place. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. You're dismissed.